What's up everybody, this is Carl from Techful Goodies, and today we are taking a look at the K10 Laser Engraving Machine by Wayne Lux. When they contacted me to see if I wanted to try this out, I was really intrigued. I already have a laser engraving machine, but it's a larger machine, it's a DIY machine, and it's a little bit difficult of a learning curve to try to get to use it. This is a smaller machine, very specific to sort of getting up and running very quickly, prints on a load of different surfaces and has some good accessories that you might be able to take advantage of if you want to add on to the printer in a future date. So let's go ahead and take a look inside and get this up and try it out and see how well it works. So here is the machine itself. Like I said, it is the K10. And you can see by the size of this machine that it's actually very small and very compact. So the good thing about that is that it doesn't take up a ton of room on your desk. Now, if you're trying to laser engrave larger items, bigger items, you might want to look into obviously a bigger system or a more industrial system. But for a hobbyist, this is going to be great, especially for someone like me who wants to do hat patches like this or small little craft projects. So that will work great. In the box, they actually give you two pieces of wood here. Uh, these are sort of for testing out and printing. They also kind of give you a couple of utensils here to be able to use or adjust the box, as well as the obligatory standard giant manual that we can take a look at. Now, what I thought was really nice about this is that it does print on a variety of products, but one of the hardest parts that I had when I got into laser engraving was understanding the speed at which it engraves, the laser strength, and how that matches up with the material that you're on. So they do provide, and I will link this down below if you're interested in looking at it, but they do provide this additional sheet right here that basically shows each one of the different materials that you might wanna use and the settings based on the printer here. So for example, if I'm gonna be printing on birch plywood, this here says that the image must be monochrome, Overscan is one, interval is 0 0.07, speed is 5,000 millimeters per minute, and the power is 80%, okay? Now, like I said, when I was doing the DIY stuff, I didn't know exactly what material and what settings. So when I was trying to do like a hat patch, I would just burn straight through the entire patch because I didn't know what power to have on. And I had to tweak that and print out test patterns and all that kind of stuff. This should hopefully make it a little bit easier to make those settings work for the substrate that you're trying to engrave. So one of the features right off the bat that I wanna point out is the fact that it has this cover that slides down. Now this is a cover that protects your eyes from the laser. On my DIY one, I have to actually wear glasses just in case I look directly at the laser and that way I can see what's going on without hurting my eyes. But this has a shield automatically built in. It also has a built-in fan. Now that built-in fan is basically gonna suck the fumes out of here and blow it out of a port, I believe. Now you can connect that to a Separate accessory you can buy is just like an air purifier. Um, the fumes from this, you know, can sort of be pretty intense when you're working on plastics or even wood. It's just a burning wood smell because you are burning the surface as you're engraving. So we will jump in here and pull out some of these additional accessories. So this is the tools and accessory box. As I mentioned before, they do also provide the glasses. I'm not saying don't wear the glasses, please. This isn't just good enough because if you lift it up or uh, look directly at the laser, you will hurt your eyes. So it's a good idea to wear the glasses, but this is an, an extra layer of protection. It also comes with a USB-A to USB-C. That's probably for hooking to your computer. Okay, yep. And now I see they also provide a box with the power adapter. So this is for just powering the machine generally. And then I guess the cord is to connect to your computer if you want to print from a separate software. Um, another thing to mention too, is this is a five watt laser. So five watt laser compared to like a 10 or 20 watt laser, depending on what you're trying to do, most hobbyists really only need five, 10, somewhere around that range, depending on what you're trying to engrave. 
So let's take a real close look here at the device itself. Like I said, it has a sensor here. So when you lift this up, it knows that the protector has been lifted up. If we go ahead and look on the inside here, you can see that it does have the laser printing nozzle. And it is very similar to kind of like a 3D printer. It'll kind of move back and forth on those rails that are in there. On the back, you have a couple of different ports here. You've got your Type-C port, you've got your DC 12 volt port, you have your TF card, so that's the flash card that you can put files on if you wanna print directly from that. Um, and your roller, this port here, if you want to print on something like a tumbler or a cup or a Yeti or something similar to that, you can actually buy in a separate accessory that is two rollers. So you set the cup on there and it will turn the cup based on what you're printing to make sure that the print side is always facing directly up at the laser. So that's something to keep in mind if you're thinking about doing cups or tumblers or something like that. And again, here in the book, it shows you an example of the air purifier. So that's a vent hose that comes out and hooks to an external air purifier if you wanna use it in a room. You go ahead and grab the USB cable and plug it into the type C port in the back here. And then we'll plug it into our computer. So in general, connecting directly with your phone is a good way to print if you wanna print directly from the TF card. If you wanna download files and print, you can go through the process of setting it up on your Wi-Fi. But the easiest and most simple way to do it is to go ahead and hook up the USB to a computer and print from there. You have a little bit more control and then you don't have to worry about all the Wi-Fi connections. But if you wanna get more advanced, you can go ahead and set up the Wi-Fi. I've connected it now through the back port here to my computer and I've downloaded the CutLab X software. And in the CutLab X software, you'll see all of the sort of templates that you can download. Um, there's, there's tons of them here. You can search through, find different things that you want to engrave. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and I'm gonna use this here, the Transformers one, obviously. And what this is showing me now is where it's going to print based on the print bed. Now, all I have to test with is what they gave me, which is this square here. So if I go ahead and open up the lid here and I place it down in the bottom left corner, I'm gonna notice that I'm printing on the square and what they have it set up for is the actual out outline of like a pendant. So just to be safe, I'm gonna go ahead and move this down to the bottom sort of left-hand corner here, because all I'm really doing is a test print. Now, what I like about that is that if you have a substrate you're printing on, you can actually set that up in here and center it correctly. With the DIY unit that I used, I had to basically go to the bottom left, ping a laser to see where it was, go to the top right, ping a laser, readjust. It took a really long time, and this, gives you the ability to basically set out and sort of draw out the size of my board. And then I would be able to center whatever I'm printing in the middle of that board. But right now we're just gonna do a test print. So I'm gonna lower this and we're gonna take a look at these settings again. So I'm printing on birch plywood. So as you can see over here on the right side, the speed is currently set to 5,000 and that's correct. Power should be 80%, so not 100%. The interval should be 0 0.7. Right now it's 0 0.1, so we'll turn that down. And there we go. So let's take a look at this. So from the top down camera, you can kind of see that I basically just printed that transformer logo pretty easily onto this board. Now, one thing you'll note, now this is gonna be something that I had to figure out while I was trying to work on this. I wasn't filming when I was messing around with this, is that you'll notice there's a small little dot right here. Now, the reason that is, is because I didn't realize at first that you need to focus the machine to make sure that it's a correct distance from what you are printing on. I knew this from the DIY set that I have. You have to man you have to sort of set the focus height, but I thought this would automatically do it, but, but it doesn't, which is fine. Uh, the easiest way to do that is they provide this. They provide a focusing paper. 
So what this does is it allows you to set it inside on top of what you're printing on. And the reason this is important, right, is the fact that not everything you print on is gonna be the exact same height. So you need to figure out the distance that the laser needs to be in order to print on whatever height item you have. So when you put this in here like that, you're gonna end up being able to focus the laser. And the way you do that is basically open this up and I'm going to show you from the top down view I'm going to make sure this is visible. So there is a little switch right here. If you turn this switch right here or this little dial right here, you can then slide the laser up and down based on where your substrate is that you're printing on. So I moved it all the way down when I just printed that. And the reason I did that was because I figured it was, you know, a good place to start. Tighten it up. And then what you can do is take your, your printer, your piece of substrate here, put it in put the focus card in and in the software I will show you you can go over to the move section here so I'm going to go ahead and move it up so that kind of just moves it away so I can see the laser and then you can hit ignition and once you hit ignition it actually turns on the laser but at about nine percent or ten percent or whatever percentage you put in there and you are hoping to see as small of a laser as possible. So when I moved it all the way down, uh, it's actually difficult to see. So I'm going to see if I can get a good picture of this because I can't lift up the shroud here because it'll turn off for safety reasons. But let's see if I can zoom in here. And you can see right now on the screen, I'm going to hit uh, stop. And the light goes off. And I'm going to hit start. And the light comes back on. And you can see how small that little dot is and that's good. When I first started doing this and I didn't realize I had to adjust that, I was seeing a much larger dot and I wasn't getting any sort of results on my substrate. Once I adjusted that, I was able to get uh, a really good looking print here. So I'm gonna do another one real quick here on the back side of this. Alrighty, so we're gonna go ahead and try another uh, image just do a quick little test print here because what I want to do is I want to show you one other feature about this that I think is very important like I had mentioned before it's sometimes hard to get it lined up so that what you're printing on will be exactly uh, where you think it's going to print so what you can do is go ahead and open it up place what you're printing on in there and then in the software you can hit preview and watch what happens it draws a square of the extents of what it's gonna print. Now, of course, you can see here on the screen that this is my usable printer space, and I don't want to this print to really take all day. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and make it just a little bit bigger. I'm gonna put it kind of up here in the middle, and then I'm gonna hit preview again. And I can see that my board is a little bit off here, so I'm gonna move it over. And preview again. And we'll go ahead and print. Alrighty, so now that that's done, let's pull it out and see what the result is. So as you can see here, this is sort of the result from the laser engraving. Now, is it a perfect replica of the image that I threw in there? No, because that image I threw in there was just a random image I found on the web. And I didn't take any time to kind of calibrate the darkness or the lightness or the grayscale. But if you can look here, I'll hold it nice and close. You can see that it sort of cuts into the wood. Right, so depending on the substrate that you're on really sort of dictates what the quality is that you're gonna get out of it. But that looks great. I mean, it actually looks really, really cool if that was on a coaster or something like this. I'm sure I could get some better, finer gradients if I added some contrast to the image or tweaked the image just a little bit more, but that's what laser engraving is all about. It's never gonna be perfect, but the K10 here seems to make it a little bit more user-friendly, a little bit more beginner-friendly. There is a preview mode, on the app, and I'll show you that real quick here. If you come into the software here, you can actually go up into the preview mode and you can see it's currently set to monochrome and that actually looks exactly like what I printed, okay? So what you can do is when you bring in your layer, you can go over to the right and change it to grayscale. 
Okay, so that so you're basically telling the software that it's a grayscale image that you want to print. Then when I go into preview this and I drop this down to the bottom to see the different ones, I can see jitter, I can see contour, I can see grayscale, and I can see negative image. I'm gonna give this thing a thumbs up. The only issue with it initially was the setup. I felt like I didn't know quite exactly how to get the internet set up. There wasn't really good instructions on that. But once I plugged it into the machine, I could just type in my internet gateway here at my house, get that hooked up. Remember to make sure to focus your laser, make sure to change the settings based on what material you're printing on. But other than that, it's a sweet little machine. Thanks again to Wayne Lux for sending that over to me. I appreciate it. If this helped you out at all, I know sometimes it takes a little bit of time to get through these videos because I am learning this stuff as we go. And I think that's a real benefit because I know a lot of people learn that way is to be able to sort of learn by experiencing. And if I can help you with that, that's what I try to do. So if this helped you, give me a like, give me a subscribe. I'd love to see you back. Thanks again to all those who are already subscribed. But until next time, this is Carl from Techful Goodies and I'm out.